Parliament, I'd like to call this meeting into order. Mary, can I please have the roll call? Kyle Fernio? Here. Hilary Costa? Here. Gianna Auger? Yeah. Jordan Day? Yeah. Travis Escobar? Yeah. Ryan Bangort? Yeah. Rebecca Allen? Present. Nathan Bissell? Caitlin Burke? Present. Raymond Camacho? Shannon Carlson? Here. Alyssa Cheeto? Here. Tyler Dean? Here. Marcy Diaz? Here. Ashley Goldberg? Hi. Justin Gosselin? Timothy Horders? Here. Laura Howard? Here. Thomas Lima? Here. Kevin Martin? Here. Nick Rose? Here. Robert Sanchez? Present. Robert Santuri? Here. Joseph Sherry? Here. Tyler Smith? Here. Edward Taylor? Gary Penfield? Here. Scott Keane? <coughs> Hamida Sarawagi? Here. Mark Gunning? Mark Palucci? Here. Barry Nickerson? Here. Maybe I'll please ask a pleasure later. <laughs> uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Point of personal privilege, Mr. Speaker, can we just stay standing for a moment of silence and remembrance of the station memorial, the station fire? Just a moment. And with that, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. motion. Second. Motion by Representative Allen, second by Deputy Speaker Bancourt. Is there any discussion on the agenda? With no further discussion on the agenda, all those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Abstentions? The uh, motion passes. There is no one there is no minutes to approve. Open forum. Is anyone here for open forum? Anyone here for open forum? Anyone here for open forum? No one here. No one is here for so we move on to officer's announcements. President Kyle Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, first, I'm sorry if my voice comes in and out. I had tonsillitis this weekend and nail sacks. Be jealous of my life. Um, so just bear with me. Um, I want to thank you all for handing in your reports in a timely manner. That was very, um, I was very happy about that. Um, like I said a couple weeks ago at the last meeting, um, I am interning with Kate Brezina. Um, I'm starting a student alumni association or writing a proposal for starting one. I posted Facebook status, I have a bunch of emails. If you are interested, you can either send me your email or come see me after the meeting. And I'm still also looking for people to help out with homecoming because I won't be here next year. Um, oh, I have a note about the Donovan digital banners, but I'll just save that for later. Um, <clears throat> just some general housekeeping updates that I'm sure Vice President Costa will mention her announcements, I don't want to steal her thunder. We're ordering more giveaways, we're designing more shirts, so stay tuned for that. Um, and I did see, my roommate said she saw a bunch of people wearing our t-shirts, so that was wonderful. Um, and then I just have this one thing that I want you guys to look at, and I'm just going to ask Mary to put it in the minutes for us. I want to wait till everybody has a copy so I can read it to you. So let me know if everybody has. Representatives who have suggestions, comments, questions, or concerns, 
I implore you to communicate with me before the March 6th meeting. I am under the impression that we have not been collaborating as a body as effectively as we can be and would like this to be as collective as possible. So there's just a heads up for you guys. I just wanted to follow the proper procedures as far as Robert's supposed to go. That concludes my announcements, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, President Becky. We're going to move on to Vice President Hillary Costa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So as far as my announcements today, just a list. Beverly McGinnis Scholarship is now available. It's been available since February 18th. Um, you can pick that up in the office. You have to be a sophomore or a junior status, and it requires you to list your GPA, how many credits you've completed as of the date, and you list your involvement in RIC leadership, RIC activities, um, your activities, to, um, how you contributed to the community outside, um, your student government involvement, and finally, just there's a last section where you can put whatever you feel the committee should see in their de decision process. Um, as far as meetings that I chair, the Public Relations Committee is meeting on March 4th at 6.30 p.m. The Elections Committee will be meeting the following Monday at 6.30 as well. As President Pecky has stated, I will be ordering koozies tomorrow on behalf of SCG with uh, Joan in the office. On the front, they're going, they're going to be red, and on the front they will say, forget Democrats and Republicans, we're one big party, and our logo will be on the back. Um, and also, just a reminder that um, it's creeping up on us, but the initial filing period is going to be the last week in March, March 25th, so keep your eyes open for that if you would like to be on Parliament for the next year. Um, and on March 25th, we're planning to have a town hall meeting, but it's also going to be an open house style town hall meeting. I've already booked the space in the ballroom. Um, the theme of the town hall is going to be um, traffic and parking and safety, and, but then around the um, parliament members will need to attend because they're going to host um, and field questions and concerns from those that may um, come to the meeting um, regarding their constituency. So if we have um, a group of people attend and they're from Thorpe Hall, I would expect that Mr. Rose would right. be able to entertain <laughs> questions regarding Thorpe Hall. So that just letting you know that's coming your way. Um, and that concludes my announcements. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Vice President Acosta. We move on to Secretary Joan Oliver. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm just going to read all this. Um, I recruited two members for SOC. Um, unfortunately, I um, lost a member. Um, my round, the next roundtable is next Wednesday, um, February 27th, from 1232 to 2 in this room, Student Union 307. The topic is fundraising. Um, I have been and will still continue to call <coughs> student organizations for their program evaluations. Um, they are due March 1st, I believe, um, for the Storgy nomination list, and I'm haunting them because I want a massive Storgy nomination list. Um, class club policy, SOC, um, and I'm working with CC Costa on that, so that's underway. Um, I've been comparing other universities and their class club policies and the things that they have for their class clubs to do. Um, other than that, I don't have any announcements. Thank you. Secretary John Oliver, we're gonna move on to Treasurer Jordan Day. So I wish I could say that budget hearings were over. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not. Um, so, we heard about six more organizations this afternoon, and we'll be hearing the remaining eight on Saturday. Um, rain, snow, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, sorry, Tim. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm getting too I apologize. Um, here's the remaining eight, including SEG and payroll, um, a bunch of other groups that'll be there. So, looking forward to getting that done with because I do not want it hanging over my head any longer, as I'm sure you guys wish it was dealt with. Um, as soon as that's done, though, I'll be able to give a, a lovely shout out to all the organizations and let them know whether or not their budget has been rec what their budget has been recommended for. Um, the commission actually did a really great job, and as a kind of an update, I guess, for budget hearings, every organization that was scheduled to appear <coughs> on that Saturday showed up. So I think that's a twist for us. We had every organization show up today, so I am, have no doubt in my mind that all eight organizations that are on. <coughs> Sunday will show up then either, unless there's more inclement weather, and so it's literally just trying to snow on my parade. Um, <laughs> I've worked on getting quotes for Groove Boston for next year because I know that the entire body was really enthusiastic about Groove Boston at the beginning of the year. As of right now, the price that we're looking to keep stay under for student community government spending, um, as far as what we'd be using for our escrow account, is under 30000 
Uh, that sounds like a lot, so I know that some of you may vomit or cringe. Um, but I'm working on getting quotes and co-sponsoring. I'm hoping to co-sponsor again with WXIN programming and RSA, and I'm going to be hollering at you, <laughs> respected organization, shortly. Um, the other thing that I'll be doing is sending out monthly budget reports by the end of this week, and Tyler and I will be working on that in the office tomorrow, so if you guys want to have a good time, come watch Tyler and I get paper cuts. <laughs> and I'd just like to say, I hope everyone has a great meeting, and welcome to our two new members, Nick Rose and Tyler Smith. Thank you. Jordan Day, move on to my announcements and the leaves I have. Um, Edward Taylor, community at large representative, requested to leave for tonight due to personal reasons. <coughs> one was seconded by Representative Santeri, seconded by Representative Porter. Any discussion on the leave? With no discussion on the leave, all those favor approving the leave, say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Abstentions and you motion know, passes. Uh, Ms. Lagunin also cannot be here at tonight's meeting due to a personal issue. Any motion? motion. Representative Santeri, second from Vice President Costa. Very discussion on the leave. No further discussion on the leave. All those in favor of approving the leave say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Abstentions. Motion passes. Nicholas Rose, community uh, representative of the, of the Hall, is requesting an early leave for 8 30 p.m. Motion. Motion. Okay, motion from Treasurer Day, second from Representative <coughs> Allen. Uh, any discussion on this leave? No further discussion. No discussion on the sleeve. All those in favor approve the sleeve. Say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Abstentions. Representative represent Uh Scott Kane, representative Dr. Kane, uh, is on vacation and had a uh, request to leave today. So. Motion. Representative Allen, second representative Santeri. Any discussion on this sleeve? With no further discussion. Everyone approving the leave, say aye. 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 All opposed say no. <coughs> Abstentions. Motion passed. And that concludes. My remarks. We're going to move on to the deputy speaker, Ryan Bencourt. Okay. How's it going, everybody? Uh, I'd just like to reiterate the welcoming to Mr. Smith and Mr. Rose. Uh, thanks for coming on. And I'd like to just say that I uh, emailed my Commission Services Committee today, uh, so we're going to have a meeting in the upcoming week or so. Um, the only other thing that I can report to you guys about is Lot C, but Mr. Liam is going to be doing that later in his uh, Lot C report, so I don't want to steal that from him. So that's it for me. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. To the reports, InterVarsity Christian Fellowship Conference <coughs> Report. Okay, so please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Lindsay Arsenal, I'm the president of InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. Um, and we went on a conference on it was December 27th to January 1st um, in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and it was a leadership like development uh, conference. It also had to do with is as follows. There's $3,250 to Flight and Hotel. That should read line number 340. So it should say line 340 comma Flight and Hotel. Um, it's another because the organization itself is using a travel agent to book their conference. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that accepted as friendly? Alright, then I just ask that the, remain, the amended minutes be accepted with unanimous consent. Okay, any opposition to that? The minutes are accepted with unanimous consent. Move on to report C, student organization committee minutes of January 22nd, uh, 23rd, and 30th by <coughs> Secretary Jamal. Um, I'm just going to ask that these minutes be accepted with me and Is there any opposition to that request? No opposition. Those minutes are accepted. We're going to move on to D, feminine, uh, feminine hygiene resolution report by President Tyler Thank you. So I want to go first just to give you guys an idea of how I want you to present this to the body. Um, I'm going to read it. I'll do my best to quit. <coughs> 
Um, before I do, though, I really would like to thank um, Mr. Pialucci and Dr. Penfield for their help with this. Um, they did a lot of the research with us, for us, actually, because um, we didn't really know what websites to go on and what schools typically use. So, with that being said, thank you, and I will read the report. Um, members of Parliament, after much research and consideration, the Executive Board of Student Community Government Incorporated came to the following conclusions. One, we will not be purchasing dispensers and products to place in academic buildings as suggested by the original proposal. Due to pending construction, this would be a waste of time and money. Number two, as a solution, we thought about putting three dispensers in the student union. However, the proximity to the convenience store which sells products, friendly amendment, change that to products, can you please thank you, and health services who, who dole products, why did I, re who dole products for free, this solution will not be applied. Moreover, we were <coughs> unsure as to who would be responsible for refills. Number three, the dispensers, when previously on campus, were subject of vandalism and theft, and this led to their eventual takedown campus-wide. Surveys conducted at sister schools, um, URI, CCRI, uh, established that students simply do not use the machines and carry their own product. We believe that this would apply to Rhode Island College students as well. In moving forward, should the body see this as a pressing issue, the Executive Council who made the original proposal would be open to hearing suggestions. Suggestions from various staff and administration have point pointed towards care packages being located in the SCP office and various other offices on campus where students can ask for and receive them. Sincerely, myself, but my entire e-board helped. I just wrote it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just asked that report <laughs> be accepted. You did. <coughs> <coughs> <Yeah. coughs> so well, are all the uh, amendments that you made pertaining to grammar, are those all accepted this Monday? Madam President, are you going to be able to? Yeah, if you want to help. Right. Thanks, baby. Take, take all of it. Um, and uh, this is support for the unanimous consent. Any opposition to that? All right. The report is received. And we're going to move on to E, Printing in the Resident Hall's Resolution Report by Representative Camacho, Representative Howard, and Representative Sanchez. I don't know, well, Representative Camacho is not here. I don't know if he's Representative Howard, or Representative Sanchez would like to take the lead on this one. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just looking at the Representative Sanchez, do you uh, need more time? <coughs> I'm about to speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's more to Resolution report printing in the residence halls. Um, you want me to read this verbatim, or can I just? I, I think it'd be best if you just explain yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, Representative Camacho said <coughs> with Brian Polly two weeks ago. Teresa has received the same request before by the RAs, but it's been turned down for multiple reasons. I listed various reasons why uh, there's points we should come up with answers if we want to present it to Teresa ahead of time. For instance, who's going to maintain them? If anything breaks down, if they're going to be available after uh, computer lab hours, which is until 11.45 p.m. till 8 a.m. from those hours, who's going to come if something happens, if there's an issue? Where will they be stored? If you want to store them somewhere, take them out for the evenings, who's going to be responsible to do it? And is it even possible? Because they have to link up to the, to the system. And you might not be just able to plug it in and start it. Either you have to be at a permanent location, or you'll have to have some uh, administrator come and install you, which would be unfeasible. One recommendation that was brought up was possibly putting them in Brown Hall across from the campus police next to the ATM.
ATM in the campus card. That way they're in a secure location, you don't have to worry about anybody smashing them up or doing any kind of damage. If, if we want to do this, we should also have um, there should be a, a router installed in all the dorms so that way the people can hook up from their own laptop, send it there, then all they have to do is go down to that computer, log in, print it, just like you do in a computer lab. Because otherwise you're gonna have massive people want to print at the same time, and they have to go in with the jump drive, log in, print it. It'd be easier just if they can all log on with their own computers to be around. And yeah, the major concerns was who's gonna pay for what was <coughs> responsible. As many of you know, there's a lot of people in the dorms that really don't care about things that don't belong to themselves. And if you leave a printer out there, they're gonna find a way to hook it up to their own computer so they'll be printing free. There was a lot of concerns. Change Brian's Lolly to Lally with an A. Okay. Um, can I get the name of the dear Robert? Uh, two P's. Okay. Should we do well? Are all those managers have discussion? Um, is there any discussion pertaining to the report? <coughs> uh, no discussion pertaining to the report. All those people are accepting the report say aye. achieve its goal of uh, reassigning Lot C as parking for community students and Lot C will remain a faculty and staff lot as decided on the February 7th meeting of the Ron College Traffic and Parking Committee. <coughs> and this section here is from the Traffic and Parking Committee meeting minutes of February 7th, 2013. Brian White took hours, hourly counts, nine to five of the car lot, cars and lot C for the first three weeks of the spring semester because the lot is nearly, nearly always full now, plus the fact that the art department faculty will be parking there again, it is decided that lot C should remain faculty only. Although the resolution did not meet its intended goal, the line of communication between the between Student Community <coughs> Government Incorporated and the Bryan College Traffic and Parking Committee has been open further to discuss parking issues going forward. Um, basically, what that means is um, um, myself, along with members of the Executive Council, Vice President Coster, uh, Officer of Parliament, Ryan Bancourt, and others, um, Representative Burke, um, uh, working on other resolutions <coughs> and, and um, basically continuing to talk to the Trafficking Pocket Committee to basically look for ways to improve the uh, parking for both residents and commuters. And um, uh, just a friendly amendment. Um, <coughs> so I've got to have the men who had my uh, my co <coughs> members on the uh, resolution. If I could get a friendly <coughs> amendment to add. 
Kyla Dean, Rebecca Allen, and Ashley Gober. Accepted with unanimous consent unless there was discussion. And that's fine. Okay, uh, Vice President Kyle. <coughs> um, I just wanted to add that um, obviously uh, Representative Lima discussed that. Myself and Ryan had been at the meeting, and um, from this, we had um, there were some requests that the faculty had that we wanted to address. Um, one, it's, it'll be coming up. I've been working with. It's been myself, um, Mr. Betancourt, Mr. Lima, um, Ms. Auger, and Ms. Carlson. I've been working on a comprehensive, oh, and Ms. Burke, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, I've been working on comprehensive parking legislation, and we have a list of things that we want to get changed, but one of them specifically that the faculty had asked for was that in C-Lot, arrows be painted to direct traffic because a lot of close encounters have been happening because the area to move is so small. So um, that legislation should be coming to you next week. It's in its final stages of revision. And also featured in that um, uh, legislation are the minutes exactly how they were written by the chair, um, Mrs. Ms. Erda of the, what? Chair, yeah, the yep, the chair of the Traffic and Parking Committee. So um, just to elaborate on Mr. Lee's report, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Lima has requested for unanimous consent. Is there any opposition to that request? For no opposition, the report is received. We are now going to move on to report G, Recreation Center Resolution Report by Representative Diaz, Burke, and Bessie. Who would like to go? Um, first of all, for amendment to um, Lisa Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, for amendment to Okay, is that accepted as friendly, guys? Yes. Okay, so um, I contacted um, Mr. Kenter a while back, and he told me that they were actually already working on something. They will be collecting data of the usage at the rec center throughout the whole semester. And then with that, coming up with some sort of plan that will be presented to the Pentio for hopeful implementation for next semester. They want to make sure that they, um, whatever they come up with doesn't interfere with student usage. And it's pretty much why, they, first of all, they want to know like times and who's and how, like the numbers and everything. <coughs> Opposition to unanimous consent, or is there any questions pertaining to this topic right now? Okay, with no opposition, the minutes are accepted. Uh, we move on to the letter H report, the rule C resolution report. <coughs> Vice President Costa, Warden, <coughs> and Representative Martin. Seems like a lot of people are sick today. Hopefully, everybody gets all right, who wants to take the lead? Vice President Costa? Okay. Sure. Um, so this report is kind of outdated at the time. Um, we had been, I had been in correspondence with Mr. Tensher and Mr. Gamble, but specifically Mr. Gamble, who is um, a director in facilities and operations over in physical plant. Um, just this past Tuesday, I met with him at 1130. And um, he took me through the old dance studio as per recommendation by Treasurer Day to look at, um, they have a bunch of older secondhand college furniture in, that, in there. And um, there was nothing that was going to suit the needs of the second floor of the hall. So um, right now we're back to the drawing board and looking to further decide what our paths could be to get that furniture. Um, and we'll be sure to keep you abreast on that. I'd ask that this be accepted with unanimous consent, unless any of the other people who, um, <coughs> on behalf of this would like to speak. Representative Gosselin, I see you. No, first of all, please speak. Okay, President. I just wanted to uh, clarify, well, expand upon what Hillary's saying. I have um, the correspondence that Representative Martin sent me. I only made 15 copies, so please use our sharing skills. Um, it, just, it just basically says what Hillary already reiterated, if you want to say, uh, see it again. Um, Again, we're just looking to see how we can make the project move forward, and there's just some other information on that for you. So there's only 15. <coughs> Share amongst yourselves. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Cousin Becky, Cousin Gosling. Um, yes, my name should be added to that. Uh, it is on there. It is on there. <coughs> okay, is there any 
opposition to the pseudo request and accept the to unanimous consent? There's no opposition. Those men to accept it to unanimous consent. We are now going to move on to what I report Donovan Digital Planning and Advantage Resolution Report. Vice President Costa, Representative Taylor, Representative Terry. Who would like to take the lead on this one? Vice President Costa. Um, so as you know, uh, myself and President Pecky had a meeting with uh, Ms. Salemi as a follow-up to the meeting with Ms. Salemi, Mr. Fleming, and Ms. Patry. Um, in that meeting, we just kind of tried to see, you know, if we could work from what happened and see if we could, if there was any more that we could gain. And we kind of just ended up with the same result as the previous meeting. Um, but I did happen to notice walking through Donovan the past couple of days that. Um, Donovan Dining Center program has sudden, programming has suddenly appeared on the two TVs that they said they needed, and it's just saying things like, we have omelets. <laughs> so all of a sudden now, Donovan has programming after President Pecky and I challenged that they didn't have any. So um, that's where it stands right now, but I know President Pecky has some follow-up information on that, so I'm going to yield the floor to her Thank to speak you, on the matter. Thank you, Ms. Costa. Yeah, actually, I was just going to talk about that myself, because I was just in Donovan an hour ago, and Ms. Burke was with me. Um, the programming consists of, we have omelets, um, the bus schedule, which is in like negative 10 font. Um, I'm not sure what else is up there. Some kind of menu for something. Yeah. It, it looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint, I don't, I, that's, that's what I said to me. I don't, and I asked like several students that were sitting under the monitor if they could see what was on the screen, and uh, the whole table said no. So, um, I, I guess we're going to follow up on it. I, I mean, if they want to have program on the TVs, the, their TVs, that's fine. I would just, you know, like some of our students, are, we're all in organizations, we all have programming we like on the TV, and out of eight TVs, two of, us, two of them are for us. The rest of them have um, programming with no subtitles. I don't know about you guys, but I don't go to Donovan to watch a soap opera with no sound. <laughs> if I want to watch TV, I will go in my room. And two of the TVs used to have Anchor TV on them, and I know there's some kind of technological... They should be... Which I, I would rather see, obviously I'd rather see Anchor TV on them. Um, so I, if you guys see this as a problem, as I have seen this as a problem, as Vice, Vice President Costa has seen this as a problem, please like let us know what you would like to help us with, because so far it's only the two of us complaining, and that obviously is falling on deaf ears. Like if you guys go, are down there in Donovan and you see that there's a glitch in programming or something seems off, come up to us and we'll keep a running tally of the instances so we have meat to our argument when we go ahead. No pun intended, it's a dining center. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, what? Picks are doing that. Yeah, basically. I've taken pictures. Um, so, I was going somewhere with this. But I also, one of the things I suggested in the meeting is, well, fine, Donovan, sure, you can reserve the right to keep those TVs, but why not put something on, instead of Wheel of Fortune during the day, put on CNN or MSNBC, something that speaks for itself and doesn't need subtitles. You can read the headline on the bottom and see the pictures of the interviews or whatever. But that was not received. So, um, with that, if there's no further discussion, I just ask that this be accepted with unanimous consent. No discussion, guys. Any opposition to accept with unanimous consent? With no opposition, we accept this with unanimous consent. We're going to move on to old business, the Twilight Constitution. I believe that would be a motion from Secretary Ogre. Yes. Is there a second? <laughs> second from Representative Santeri. Okay, so um, this is the Guitar Life Constitution. Um, we have representation here, so I'm just going to introduce him and let him explain what the club is about. His name is Cooper. I'll yield the floor to you. Okay. Um, so on behalf of Guitar Life, um, I want to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to represent ourselves at the weekend. And um, to start Guitar Life at Rhode Island College to enrich the, the college life, you know, I feel like some of the clubs on campus are not really out there. They kind of hit I, 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 you know, so, but through Guitar Life, we, uh, we want to, we, we want to encourage students just to come together and learn something new, the guitar, um, and education through the guitar, uh, I'm sorry, education through Guitar Life is going to be done through peer interaction, through uh, <coughs> books, DVDs, Right now, my mind is going somewhere else, but <laughs> very nervous. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so the purpose of Guitar Life is 
basically to educate the student body on playing the guitar. And um, like I said previously, uh, education is going to be done through peer interaction, um, experience through experienced guitarists and inexperienced guitarists getting together and just learning from each other. Does that conclude your remarks? Does that conclude your remarks, Jason? I'm sorry about Questions in the body? With no anymore. <coughs> All those in favor of approving the constitution, constitution say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Abstentions. And the most you guys all. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we're going to move on to new business A, board plan usage of the capital resolution. Representative Chiefs. Okay, so I'm just going to read. Actually, maybe 
make that a priority because I think that's something that could get easily done the next year. I think that's something that can, that can happen. <coughs> um, I, don't, I don't think there's anything, unless Vice President Gary Cunfield knows of any financial reason why they wouldn't want to be open to this idea, but I think it would just have to go into uh, making sure the cards down the cafe can actually accept the work plan, actually, I mean, a transfer of data. But I think this would help out a lot of students, especially since all of our plans um, are in board. So I think that's a really awesome idea, and I'm glad to see it. Awesome. I represent uh, President Kyle. <laughs> um, well, I just now that I'm thinking of it, isn't there a Donovan meeting tomorrow that there you're going to go to? <coughs> when would that be, Ms. Auger? At 12:30. Oh. It's in the faculty center South dining room, I and I will so. be there. I won't because I have work, but I think people who are concerned should go. They should definitely go. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to commend um, Representative Cheeto on this for being awesome because when I was a freshman, Travis will tell you I didn't say anything. So I would really, I'm so proud of her, it's awesome. And Joe for signing this, that's awesome too. It's a very good idea. Um, we've definitely discussed it in town hall meetings, we've discussed it in parliament. I think at one point we were told that it was going to happen and then it did not. Um, so this will be something that we can look into, we can investigate and hopefully we'll produce something for the students. So that concludes my remarks. Uh, rep uh, <coughs> Representative Nickerson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm pretty sure at URI, their system, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure their system is instead of having X amount of times you can eat, you have X amount of meals for like a, for just on your card. So if you have, like some people, like for example, when I was on campus, I had to do points because I didn't see any point in board because I worked every morning and then I had class at night, so I would never eat breakfast on campus. So I, I think that if we were to consider switching to something like that, obviously it works at a nice <coughs> that it hasn't burned down. And there's, <laughs> so I mean, I, I, I know that, for example, their extra board points can be used as guest passes towards the end of the semester. And um, be, without the time constraint, it makes it a lot easier for students who have class, say, 11 to 1230 and then 1230 to 2. And whoop, there goes 11 to 2 meal plan. So I'm just going to throw it out there and maybe to look at their plan as a possible model. However, I also know that theirs is a swipe and it's all you can eat and forget forget it. We're still paying like $3 yeah. for a soda, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Representative Goldberg. Um, just for some knowledge, I believe over in the galley, the cafe on the other side of campus, you can use board. Um, I'm a music and theater student, and so a lot of my classes are in the NAS, and we'll go over there and use our lunch board. So just so you guys know, um, you can over there. Okay. So you can use that at a point. <laughs> Really? That it helps out over there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but actually, is that only during the hours of like regular service? Is that like that? It's all day. Like I'll go over there. Like if I have a class in the NAS all day, mm -hmm. I'll go over there with my friends for lunch, and we use our lunch board. So we have the technology. <laughs> <laughs> that that cafe is also open only for certain hours. It closes okay. at four Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Representative Rose. Uh, Representative Cheeto, um, I, I would like to commend you uh, on this because I I received this very same idea from one of my constituents of Victoria Seagull. You remember her? She's from Hope and, and all that. Uh, it was uh, until I found out that, that you took the idea. <laughs> I, I have a, I have another uh, resolution that I'm going to prepare that would be related to the cafe. If anyone would be interested in call sponsoring it, you just let me know. Put up my email. And I want to commend you uh, uh, on this idea. Thank you, Representative Rose. We'll move on to Representative Allen. I think this is a good idea. I mean, I'm obviously not on it. Goes <laughs> it. But I think that oftentimes we worry about really small things that we can't get done, you know, parking. We worry about, you know, kind of that stuff. This is something that actually affects people. Whether or not they can eat is a huge deal. And whether or not the money that they are forced to spend on a meal plan actually gets spent and helps them is a huge deal. So I think this is an example of us actually doing our jobs. So I just wanted to put that up. Here, here. Thank you, Representative Allen. Who wants to represent the ends? Just FYI, they definitely can use it downstairs because when we have the holiday dinner and the, um, the Thanksgiving dinner, they make us use our boards downstairs for like three hours out of the day. So they definitely can. All right, you can do this. Representative Sanchez. <laughs> 
First of all, on the east side of campus, that cafe is open until three. Nope, it's open from eight a.m. to eight p.m. Oh, it's eight p.m. Change hours. In the past, this has been. In the past, this has been brought up before. I remember with Donald Leavens, and I also recall the response from Donald. Their response was, to do this, they need uh, more area to stock more food because they have limited space. Uh, to store food. I'm just giving you a heads up. If you bring it up tomorrow, that's what they're going to come out to it. But then you can also say, well, they do have access, employees well, at the cafe, to enter the dot so they can use some of that storage. Use that in your belt tomorrow. Who, me? Are you going to be bringing this up tomorrow? Am I? I, I, I was you mean speaking with I'm not listening. Uh, well, to whom ever brings it up tomorrow? I didn't know if you're going as a student or a employee. Okay. Okay. Excellent job. Thank you. Treasurer Day? Well, I just wanted to address kind of one of Representative Sanchez's concerns was whether or not, it was brought up before, the space, the storage, food, how much food would be available. I think a lot of students already use their board, their points there, so it would probably be the same amount of food intake as if people were using their board there. So I think that's something that we might want to pose to Donovan if that was a concern. Say, well, would it really be effective because those students are currently using their points versus using their board? I, like, I think that it's good to have that point of view brought up here and now because then if that's an issue, we've already kind of come up with a counterpoint. So it opens up dialogue. Um, sorry, just really quickly. Um, I think they definitely can do that at the cafe because they do that on days that Donovan is closed. We go down there and use our board points anyways. So just throwing that out there. Really quick. They can definitely do that. Thanks for the priority. Any other comments from the uh, board? <coughs> With no further discussion, obviously we already have a motion from Representative Chiva. Um, no further discussion, all those in favor of approving the resolution say aye. Aye. All those say no. Abstentions. And the residents. Secretary all their abstentions. And the motion of the We will now move on to new business and violence against women resolution by Representative Goldberg. <laughs> All right. Excuse my voice. I'm feeling a cold. <laughs> That's okay. No, I'm not. Okay. Whereas at least one in every three women has been or will be physically harmed, emotionally disturbed, raped, and or abused by their partners in their lifetime. And whereas domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women more than car accidents, muggings, and rapes combined, and whereas there are reported forcible sex offenses in the residence halls on Rhode Island College campus, and where, and whereas women in the programs, organizations, and classes here at Rhode Island College have had to deal with these crimes unknown to their peers, and whereas on February 12, 2013, the Senate passed the renewal of the Violence Against Women Act and now awaits the vote of the House of Representatives. Therefore, it be resolved that Rhode Island College Student Community Government Incorporated supports the end of violence against women. And therefore, be it resolved that Rhode Island College Communities, sorry, Rhode Island College Student Community Government Incorporated supports the Women's Center of Rhode Island and all the work that they do. And therefore, be resolved that Rhode Island College Student Community Government Incorporated acknowledges the pain and suffering that survivors of these crimes have had have been through, and the strength that they have gained. And be it therefore resolved. Be it further resolved that Rhode Island College is committed to always being a safe space for any person of the Rhode Island College community who has been affected by these crimes and the utmost respect for their privacy and compassion for their journey. Um, this is very personal for me. I'm, uh, I was physically, emotionally, and sexually abused by my boyfriend my freshman year. And with all the um, stuff, you guys know what the concert I'm doing to, to the Women's Center of Rhode Island. I've seen an outpouring of respect and um, support from the community at Rhode Island College, and I want to present the Women's Center with this if it is approved to show them that we, res we respect them, we're here, and we support everything they do to help the community. Um, and I would just love you guys to support on it. Well, we have a motion for Representative Goldberg. Is there a second? Second. Who am I going to give this to? Maybe. I like Representative Allentown. I think I, I, first I'd like to say it's very brave of you to uh, talk about your story in front of people openly. 
about that. Um, my mother's an advocate and, and will advocate for the sisters overcoming abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, that's under the um, domestic violence coalition. Um, and I think that's just very brave. And I definitely support that, obviously. Uh, that's an issue also near and dear to my heart. So I just wanted to be the first to give you congrats. Um, <laughs> Since you've shared something of your story, just how hard it is, it's almost like I think it's akin to almost like coming out when you come out as having been an ab abuse victim, and it is a struggle to transition from victim to survivor. It's a it's a mindset. It takes so much bravery, so much courage, so much that you shake and your heart pounds and you sweat and you feel nervous and you can't think straight, all because you want to tell someone that you survived. So the fact that you did this in your sophomore year after what happened to your freshman year, that you're really, really, really brave, and I have so much respect for you right now, and I'm so proud of you for bringing this forward, and I think this is a really important thing for us to just put that message out there that we're zero tolerance for any sort of behavior like that, and especially to create a culture where that sort of thing isn't joked around mm -hmm. with, because we've, we've all heard it. We've all heard people either on the quad or in the cafeteria <laughs> joking about <coughs> rape or Make me even something like make me a sandwich, things like that. You know, as much as you can, much as you can think it's funny, it's degrading to women. It's it it puts people at a lower level, and it gives you the wrong kind of power. And you should have probably by a person, not by your privilege. So I'm just I'm really proud of you, and I'm voting yes. So <laughs> let's go. Thank you, Representative Nicholson, for your comments. We'll move on to Representative Allen. When I was six years old, I was sexually assaulted. For and it continued for the next nine years. Nobody knew about it until I was 17. And the next, well, I'm 24 now, so it's, it's been a while and I'm still dealing with the effects of what happened. And it, it amazes you how many jokes are made and people don't really think about it and how many things are said and people just don't think about it because it's such a part of our culture. And seeing a resolution like this kind of hits me because it was a secret for so long and you just didn't talk about it. And then once I told some people, well, you know, you're okay now, nothing's happened, he's away, you know, it's fine, you're, you're okay now. But you're never okay. It's, you get better, you get stronger, but it's, it's not okay. And I think us talking about it is a step in the right direction. Because if we talk about it and we say this is zero tolerance, it's not gonna happen, people are gonna stop making jokes about it and it stops becoming funny. And then when somebody makes a joke about it, you know that that person isn't thinking like the rest of us. And I just, I, <laughs> this is a hard subject for me to talk about, but I just want people to know that a lot of the women here either have been through or know somebody who has been through it. And a lot of the men probably know somebody who's been through it and it might not have been talked about. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Allen. Move on to Representative Santer. Thank you, Speaker Escobar. Well, just one thing, two things. One, I just want to, actually, nobody knows how I feel about us, but I just want to commend also Representative Allen for her bravery in saying what she just did because that takes a huge amount of courage to say something like that, what happens to you. 
But I just want to emphasize that a part of this bill that's important real quick is the Violence Against Women Act, which has not been, as of this day, as of today, has not been renewed yet by the House of Representatives in Congress. Mm -hmm. You know, the House, I just want, I'm not going to speak too much about it, but I'll say the Violence, the Violence Against Women Act was enacted in 1994, and it was, okay, and, yeah, and then it was, it was renewed in 2005, and then now in 2012, for various reasons, politically, Congress has not yet renewed it. And I think that's a joke, and I think that, you know, we as student leaders should definitely stand, I uh, should have an opinion where everybody's rights, everybody's, well, everybody's rights should be respected, and, you know, acts like this are things that are very important, but I just wanted to say, also, finally, just how proud I am that we do want to present this to you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Sanitary, Representative Vessel. Oh, no, it's Vessel. Is there any further discussion on this resolution? With no further discussion on this resolution, all those in favor of approving the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Abstentions and abstention by Representative Vessel, and the resolution passes. I said that uh, for every meeting we would somehow say Macklemore and Ryan Lewis are <laughs> being Dr. King's representative to the concert committee. Um, I would report that presently the Welcome and Information Center has about 500 or so plus tickets sold. Uh, we are limited in the, the <coughs> ticket sale to 2,000, so buy your tickets, tell your friends. Um, for a friend of mine just emailed me and Macklemore Ryan Lewis is in the New York Times uh, entertainment, arts, and music section yesterday. So, climbing the charts, and I think our committee has picked a winner. Sometimes it's a stroke of luck, sometimes it's 
more than a show for lots, but uh, I think we have a great show. Um, but that's my fabulous time for more comments. Also, because I do represent the staff at the college and I keep hearing dining center, dining center, dining center, there are two new staff members, uh, managers in the dining center. And Dr. Hemphill can help me. And Alyssa and Janet. Janet. Janet and Alyssa. Um, two managers that are in the dining center. They're out and about pretty much every day. Um, I think Alyssa's doing a lot of the catering right now. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe you can help me. Um, Janet has replaced Mr. Ogle's place. Okay. So she is doing, handling all the catering. Um, and Alyssa is um, following Arthur around pretty much <laughs> right now. Um, and yeah, they're great. And she's there because Mr. Patry is uh, uh, going off on a tour of duty yep. wherever. <coughs> we never know where it's going to be, but uh, you know, we assume it's going to be probably Afghanistan or Iraq or somewhere anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, there, and he leaves the middle, middle March, of March. The second week of March. And we'll be, he'll be away for about six months. And so that's why she's on board. Yes. Um, Representative Auger, do you have any? Uh, do you have any other comments? I saw you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that Macklemore also has a full spread in Rolling Stone this month, and they also have been for the past like two or three weeks. Um, <coughs> they've been like number one on the weekend countdown on MTV. That's um, too. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. on the other. And on the cover of this week's anchor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's excellent. <laughs> Is that me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the things I I think the college um, has been doing a great job, and I think the college, the president recognized, and I wasn't there for the over comments, but the number of activities and the events that are going on, and I don't hear the students saying, oh, there's nothing to do, this is a lame college. Um, I went to the basketball game last night, and again, they're playing, I think, Friday night at 8 o'clock. I expect they'll make that plug. Um, <laughs> But I think there's a lot of things going on on campus for our students to do, nights, weekends. Um, and if you're not out doing that, you're out shoveling snow. So um, there's definitely plenty of things to do. And it's good to not have to keep hearing this body in the past always saying there's, there's nothing to do on, you know, on this campus. But there are plenty of student activities, trips, performing arts, athletics. And I think the college is doing a great job of, uh, of getting our students to go to those things, too. It's selling out a lot of events. So uh, the other, my last comment, and I, I'm surprised it popped up, but I, Kyla's uh, um, letter that she sent at the beginning of the meeting, and I, I give like a Herculean effort to, to Travis to bring that proposal to this group and for you guys to putting it forward. And it is something that it will not take, just, it's not saying we're taking stipends away or that um, the board is looking to take stipends away. It's looking to help students with uh, either a low grade point average or you know, maybe you withdrew from a lot of your classes and getting you some help and being a better student, a better leader, and not penalizing you. So I think when you, you and I would hope that we can send that proposal that you, it's not a proposal, it's what you approved um, with all the amendments to everyone before the discussion begins March 6th on that item so you know what you're discussing, you know what you already approved, um, and, and if you make amendments, for, so be it. But it's at least the beginning um, to something that could be historical. It's something that this board probably talked about you know, 30 or 40 years ago and never really put something on paper. Um, and, and at least at a trial basis um, for a year or so and come back and look at it. I think it's a, it's a positive thing. And it shows that you want to be better students academically and you want to be better leaders. So before you go rush to judgment and, and do your homework uh, on it before March 6 meetings, and that's my remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Paralucci. We had some comments. Representative Mark. To follow up on the Macklemore thing, I believe they're actually doing an SNL show right before yeah. they're coming for our concert. So <coughs> if we don't sell tickets out by then, we're definitely going to sell them out after that. Representative Sanchez? Yes. Uh, Mark. Isn't the leadership weekend coming up? And isn't there a deadline soon? My iPad doesn't run out before the end of the meeting. I can probably look it up. I can tell you. Okay. Um, the 
March, it's March 22nd to the 24th, and the deadline is the 1st of March. For applications, it's Friday. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Representative Sanchez, did you have any? Nope, that was all. Thank you. Well, uh, Mark, as, as it comes to the Academic Success Act, I, I, will, uh, will, will, will the body be able to take into consideration about uh, students with learning disabilities like ADHD, Asperger's Syndrome? Because I have both of those, and I think that that students with learning disabilities like like severe autism or um, or Asperger's syndrome, I, I don't think it's fair uh, to, to them that they have to be held to high standards for, to become student leaders and receive stipends. Uh, obviously, this is your um, first meeting, but yeah. my issue was discussed, and I'll talk to you after. Okay. Sounds good? Okay. Representative Howard? Um, I'd just like to reiterate um, what Representative Rose just said about um, the academics for learning disabilities, because I also have a learning disability, and that gets home to me too as well. So. Um, I would just like to reiterate what Representative Rose suggests. Then can I, can I talk to both of you guys after me? Okay. Um, any, any other comments pertaining to parallel cheese announcements? All right. We'll move on to alumni representative Barry Nixon. You have anything to report? Um, yeah, just a few like brief quips. You know, my usual nonsense. <laughs> I'm going to be a great professor one day. So, um, <laughs> So a few things. Um, one, Treasurer Day, I hate to report this. You're gonna kill me. Uh -huh. You're gonna hate me, but that's what I saw on the weather. <laughs> if you tell me it's a foot, I'm just gonna go hide in it. And it's the six. To, it's, it was the six to twelve pink, but we're on the kind of the bottom of that, so we might get through to six. Heads up, keep an eye on it. Those things change during the day, but in case you didn't know, if it's I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real threat. It's cousin, obviously you do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's that's one thing. Um, another thing, this is a little, little bit silly, I don't want to waste too much time, but just because you said the NyQuil thing, I'm definitely allergic to NyQuil also. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> since my allergies come up every week, you know, oh, the blue and the chocolate, oh, and NyQuil, that's out of, that's out of that. Done. Um, a shot of whiskey, man? <laughs> it's usually before, not after. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, another thing, a great, great idea, um, like, like President Pecky said earlier, if you see the TVs downstairs, they're not working, like, take a picture with your smartphone and email it to the general SCG one, or email it to Kyla's SCG email, don't turn Joan's phone into the complain about Donovan TV's hotline, <laughs> or she'll never know when her pizza comes, cause she can't answer the phone, so, sort it out there, you know, picture phone, quick picture, email it, great. And then finally, I have, like, three quick kudos. Um, so, whoop to Representative Cheeto for being innovative and clever, whoop to Representative Goldberg for being brave and strong, and whoop to Vice President Costa for your patriotism and remembering a day that's very important to me as well, and making it a point at the beginning of the meeting. And that's it. Thank you. Alumni Representative Barry Nixon. Move on to appointments, resignations, and vacancies by Madam President. Thanks. Okay, so like Gianna said, I have two resignations from SOC. Um, I have Alexandra Berard and Kristen Salemi, and we are replacing those members with Danielle Francosi, Franciosi, and Matthew Leo. So I just ask that those be accepted as unanimous consent. Is that accepted by the body of unanimous consent? Thanks. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so issues of parliament members, does anybody yeah, have any questions? Raise your yeah, cards up. Hey, Diaz, Howard. Okay, guys, let's try to make this a little short. Treasure Drum Day! Okay, so one thing Mark forgot to mention is that tickets are ten dollars for students. $20 for non-students, I want to reiterate, $10 for that one student ticket, $20 for the non-student ticket. So the only, that is located at the Welcome and Info Center at the bottom of the student union on the ground level. So second. if you have a second level technically, but it's the ground level for the normal people. Um, <laughs> we're fancy student union dwellers, I can't, I can't blame us. Um, but they're available at the Welcome and Info Center as long as the Welcome and Info Center is open. And I, like Mr. Paolucci, are keeping tabs on ticket sales because this is quite the investment. 
Not to mention another investment making in our future. Alpha Sigma Tau is still looking for new members as of this Friday. So if you are interested in joining a sorority, ladies in the room, they're a lot more fun than you'd anticipate. If you're interested in making new friends or you don't think you'd fit in, take the chance, get to know them. Email Erica Richards at alphasigmatau.org or walk across the hall and watch the <laughs> remainder of Pitch Perfect and grab some pizza, pizza. Free pizza. And let's make this end of this meeting kaka awesome. <laughs> I'd like to have to be in the minutes, by the way. <laughs> no. Come on, guys. Wrap up So thanks. One, men's and women's rugby's recruiting. I'm studying um, indoor practices next week, so if anyone's interested, get at me. Two, um, we just came back from a conference, a programming conference, and um, back to Michael Moore out of five different students. <coughs> we talked in a little... Um, in possession with you around the same budget, three other of them were getting my more as in like three months. Ago. Ooh, ooh. They're like getting around. Go for it. They're yeah. getting around. Just FYI. <laughs> Cheating on us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Representative Diaz. Move on to Representative Howard. Okay, um, just really quickly, the trash bins, I'm getting a lot of like praise about them, so I just want to, <laughs> like, I like literally the entire reason I joined. I was like, went on a rampage about trash bins, but everyone likes them, so awesome. I appreciate it. Um, also, I don't know, I know there was something that was supposed to be done to fix it, I don't know if it has been, but the speed bump that is outside in Lot L is, like, horrible. Speed I'm sorry, but, like, it's, like, the worst placement. People keep bottoming out, like, I've gotten, no, seriously, I've gotten so it's many It's, like, on an angle, it. too, right? It's, like, the most ridiculous, I don't know, I made like it, but, like, it's yeah, it's painted it's, yellow. Where is it? Okay, so you know how it's um in between Weber, I mean um, Willard and Weber, it's like right and lot. Oh, out. okay. Yeah. Um, and it's I just gotten like so many complaints about it. People keep bottoming it out. Um, and it's not really fixing any, fixing anything. So people can just go around it. So I'll add it to the legislation I'm bringing next week. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Does that conclude you? That does. I would just like to uh, shout out to uh, alumni Aaron Buckley, former speaker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see active alumni involved and still you know, keeping an eye. You know, I'm big on you know, you know, uh, having alumni that we can look up to um, and uh, uh, keeping uh, student life you know, active. And, Site of the above, uh, alumni. So, good to see you. That's the guys doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see Aaron. Secretary Jim Okay, so first things first, food service advisory committee meeting tomorrow, 12 30, in the faculty center south dining room. Bring your comments, bring your concerns, bring your suggestions. I'll bring this fine resolution that we have. Um, other than that, I'll report back to you guys, like, if. I don't know if Ms. Keto can make it or if anyone else that signed it can make it, but if not, I will be the one to report back to you guys. Um, and other than that, I know you're going to say it, I know he's going to say it, but Beats and Rhymes to End Dating Crimes. I'm the president of the sophomore class. We're helping to co-sponsor it, so I'm going to reiterate it. Um, buy your tickets. Tickets are only $10. It goes to the Women's Center of Rhode Island. Um, all donations accepted, even if you can't make it. Um, and we're also collecting new cell phones. So if you have an old, dead, used, beat up, thrown in the trash can cell phone, just <coughs> throw it in a box. Give it to uh, Mr. Santori or Ms. Goldberg. Right. Yep, that's it. Thank you, Secretary Alder. We're going to move on to Representative Martin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Speaker Escobar. I would like to announce the junior class will be hosting an event before the end of the semester. Thank you, Speaker Escobar. <laughs> 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 I cannot wait to attend your event, Kevin. <laughs> um, Jordan, that was a lovely commercial. Um, I would also like to reiterate Beats and Drives and Dating Crimes. Um, we have raised more than we raised for the radiothon that we had last semester, um, and we still need to go. Um, I want your phones, so bring them in. <laughs> And um, if you want to hear like more of my story, there'll be other stories shared that night, as well as Women's Center will be there. Seven amazing acts, so I would love to see you guys all come out. Um, it's really going to be a great evening. Okay, thank you, Representative Goldberg. We'll move on to Representative Turner. Thank you, Speaker Escobar. These two ladies here have just already said what I was going to say. However, I have something different. I have actual tickets for sale. So, after the meeting, if you'd like to purchase a ticket to the concert next Thursday, February 28th, doors open at 8 p.m., uh, $10 tickets, all proceeds go to Rhode Island Women's Center, we don't see a dime, and 
I have change, you need change, I have man, $20 bills, I gave you that 50 in there. But anyway, which the treasure day we'll be receiving tomorrow. <laughs> this way. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, tickets will be on, I'll be here after the meeting, so if you want to buy a ticket, just see me. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Santoni. We'll move on to Representative Burke. Representative Burke? Oh, oh well. So I think because Dr. Penfield missed last week's meeting, we should um, sing him happy birthday. Oh, oh, birthday, oh, birthday. Oh, 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 oh. We have a card for you in the office. Too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dr. Penfield. Happy birthday to you. is to get more signs that say stop and crosswalk and that are bigger because the one in front of Sweet Hall is faded so nobody ever reads it. But I would also like to, Vice President Costa, maybe you can add that they put a sign up there. One of our residents is going to be completely blind. Maybe by the end of the semester. And maybe you can have them put up one of the blind crossing signs. Showers in Thorpe Hall, and, and I was going to pr prepare a resolution to bring before you guys about the renovations in the uh in the residence halls, including including my my, my constituency in Thorpe and, and to Weber, uh, Brown and Sweet and all that, but because except for New Hall because of the fact that it's a new building and, and it. It, uh, uh, no, no offense to, to you guys, no offense. <laughs> but but and the old problem in Weber, well, well, every. It, those old buildings, they, they have to be fixed because the fact is that they're they're old. I've been there since I've been here since two thousand six, and I'm looking at the building the buildings every day. They're like an eyesore to me because they're all old. <laughs> and uh, as representative for Paul, I would like to have those uh, buildings fixed. Okay. Well, the big information, I would just like to point out that. Four or five years ago on the front page of the anchor, Aaron Buckley wrote an article complaining about the mold and weather and how the showers didn't work. So it is time for a resolution. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Here. 
Good evening, everybody.